Hi, I'm Dan, and this is the start to finish tutorial series for the high grade NZ666 Cassatria. In this series, I'm going to go through all the various steps, tips, and techniques that I will use to build, modify, detail, and paint this kit. This series will be broken up across several videos. I recommend that you watch the videos in numerical order. I hope that this tutorial series provides you with an insight into how I build and paint my model kits. If you have any questions about the various tips, tricks, or techniques that I've demonstrated, then please leave a comment in the corresponding video. This video series was made possible due to the generous support of my patrons over on Patreon.com. The kit featured in this video was also selected by my patrons. If you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, or if you'd like to help select kits for a future start to finish series, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can help out for as little as a dollar a month, and I owe a big thank you to all of my patrons for their ongoing support. Thanks, guys. In this section of the tutorial, we will cover paint preparation and painting. Before we start to paint, we need to prepare our parts. I recommend cleaning the parts prior to painting. Parts can collect sanding material, dust, or oils from your hands. All of these environmental issues can affect the paint's ability to adhere to the plastic or can disrupt a smooth finish. This is a tool I made to help safely wash parts. This part washer is an old peanut container with a screw top lid, and all I did was poke holes in the top of the container to allow for drainage. Any shaped container will work, but it's important that the container has a screw type lid. I wash my parts in warm, not hot water, with a few drops of dish soap. Feel free to agitate the parts in the container and then drain them. I typically rinse my parts two to three times until the water runs clear. And I like to allow my parts to dry at least a full day on a hand towel. You can purchase skewers pre-assembled or you can make your own. If you'd like to make your own, all you'll need are alligator clips and bamboo barbecue skewers. There isn't a one-size-fits-all solution for skewering parts. Here, I'm using two different types of skewers to skewer some more difficult parts. By placing a toothpick at the tip of an alligator clip, you can insert the skewer between two narrow parts. Another solution that I like to use is using a chunk of cardboard with some masking tape on it. Notice the perpendicular bands. This is to help keep the long piece of masking tape down. Simply stick the parts onto the masking tape. Before we get into painting, we need to talk about safety. I know that no one likes a safety lecture, but the reality is we're using chemicals, and those chemicals can carry some serious consequences when they're not handled properly. I'm not a safety expert, a chemist, or a doctor, but as someone that is concerned with my personal safety as well as the safety of my family, I strongly recommend that you spend the time to research the Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, for each of the products before using them. The MSDS will, at a minimum, describe the hazards the products present, precautions that should be taken, and the procedures for proper handling and storage. This hobby isn't worth risking your health or the health of your family over. Do your research, protect yourself, and stay safe. Okay, lecture over. Let's briefly cover the equipment that I'm using. There are four basic components to my airbrush setup. The compressor, the regulator slash water trap, the hose, and the airbrush. Links are in the description for the makes and models of each component. This is a super simple explanation of the functions of each piece of the setup. The compressor pressurizes and stores air inside of the receiver tank. The regulator controls the amount of air entering the hose. The water trap removes some moisture created during the pressurization process. The hose's job is self-explanatory, and the airbrush mixes the air and paint and sprays it out. I'm sure that some of you may ask, I typically set my regulator to spray in the 25 to 30 PSI range. An airbrush setup is likely going to be the most expensive purchase that you'll make in this hobby. If you are interested in purchasing an airbrush setup, you can do a lot worse than the parts that I've chosen here, but I recommend that you thoroughly research each before making the jump. Let's talk about priming. Primer is an undercoating that prepares the surface for painting. Priming increases paint adhesion, improves the durability of the paint, and it can help mask the original base color. 
I want you to think about primer the same way you think about proofreading a letter before sending it. Primer flattens all the detail on your kit, which makes it very easy to pick out the faults in your finish. This is going to be the last chance you have to fix any issues that you still have with your kit. There are many different types of primer on the market. I prefer to use Mr. Surfacer from Mr. Color, and I tend to use Mr. Surfacer 1000 or 1200 for most general surfaces, and Mr. White Base for lighter or brighter parts. Sometimes I'll also use Surfacer 500 for areas with rougher seam lines, plastic plate, or other modifications. With Mr. Surfacer products, the lower the number is on the bottle, the rougher the finish will be, but the more filling power it'll have. I never paint directly onto Surfacer 500. I'll always partially or fully sand the area first before applying Surfacer 1000. Unlike spraying paint, I will only apply a single layer of primer, unless, that is, I'm trying to fill a shallow defect. Never flood the surface with your paint or primer, and always allow it to dry completely before applying another coat. Once the primer has dried, I will check and sand the parts as needed. This can take several rounds, so don't get discouraged if it isn't perfect the first time. Once everything has been checked and the primer is dry, we can move on to paint. There are a lot of different brands and types of paint out there. I personally like to use lacquer paints from Gaia Color and Mr. Color. The color codes that I'll provide later on reference the color names and numbers of their product lines. Regardless of the brand or type of paint, one thing you're going to need to do is to mix the paint before spraying. As you can see here with this bottle, the paint has separated. This is normal, but we need to reintroduce the paint as best we can. You can pick the bottle up and give it a good shake for a minute or two, but I find a combination of stirring the paint and shaking it tends to produce the best result. Once the paint has been mixed, we can load it into our airbrush and thin it. I use a set of disposable plastic pipettes to move and mix the paint. This is a really good way to avoid wasting or cross-contaminating your colors. I typically like to start with a 2 to 1 mixture of thinner to paint and then make adjustments from there. Your paint should flow smoothly with minimal resistance and its consistency should be roughly the same as 2% milk. Once the thinner and paint have been added to the hopper of my brush, I'll squeeze the bulb of the pipette several times to mix and incorporate the two elements. Once that's done, we're ready to go. I typically paint from roughly 4 to 6 inches away from the piece, and when spraying, I apply several thin layers at a time. Typically, if I'm painting a batch or a certain color, I'll paint all the pieces with one coat, let them dry, and then come back and paint them all again with a second. Depending on the thickness of the paint coat, I'll typically apply two to three layers. Once I finish painting, I'll return the color to the jar. Using a lacquer thinner, I'll fill the hopper with the thinner before wiping it out with a bit of paper towel. Once that's done, I'll spray a small amount of thinner through my brush into the cleaning jar, and I'll repeat this process as necessary until the brush is completely clean. I'll typically only break my brush completely down for a full cleaning once a month. We start by applying two coats of white primer onto all of the sleeve details. We're doing this because the sleeve detail is white and we're painting over a black plastic. Next, we need to apply two coats of gloss white, allowing time to dry between each coat, followed by a coat of high gloss clear. Having a high gloss surface will protect our base coat and make the later steps easier. Then I applied two coats of gloss black enamel. It's very important to allow the enamel to dry completely I recommend giving it a full day to cure before we move on to the next step. The next step of this process is the most precise. Using lighter fluid or enamel thinner, I'll rub a Q-tip or a paper towel over all the raised edges of the sleeve detail. Over time, this will weaken and remove the enamel thinner. If you accidentally remove the paint in the wrong area or you go outside of the lines, you'll need to repaint the enamel and try again. This is a painstaking process, so don't worry if you goof it up. Here is a list of all the color combinations that I used on the Cassatria. Quick note, the colors listed in white are from Gaia Notes colors, and the color listed in blue is from Mr. Color. The color combinations listed here are just for reference. These will get you close to the intended colors, but there will be differences in your mixture that you'll need to tweak if you want to get an exact match.
I have a few other tips that you should take away from this video. First, remember that primer can be used to double check your finish before painting. If you're using custom color combinations on your build, make sure you mix more paint than you think that you'll need. You'll never know when you need to go back to fix a mistake, and you don't want to run out of paint prematurely. Mix your paints thoroughly before painting. Thin your paints appropriately. Spray multiple thin layers instead of one thick layer. When in doubt, give your paint extra time to dry. Find and read the MSDS for your paints and solvents. Paint smart, paint safe. Thanks for checking out this video. If you found it to be helpful, please leave a like and a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. Thanks guys.